Welcome to the Bellhops Digital Tabletop and a preview of Blood Bowl 3, the latest version of Blood Bowl in its digital format, updated to the new second season rules of the physical game. Big thanks to Cyanide and Nacon for allowing us access to this closed beta of the game and for finally lifting the embargo, preventing us from talking about it the last few weeks. Though it would still be awesome if you would send us a second key so we can play against each other and tell you how online multiplayer works. Knack on, come on, cyanide. Uh, Blood Bowl 3 was originally scheduled to be released this August, but due to various contributing factors, this release date has now been pushed back to February 2022 for the full release, though there will be an early access release on Steam in September of 2021. Currently, we are in a limited, closed beta of the game to experience what it has to offer. And as I've played all the various versions to date, I consider myself somewhat of a fan, and I took the reins on this review. Yeah, it was offered to me, and I'm like, no, Sean is a huge Blood Bowl fan. He has played every version I have. I have played the original game, and I played uh, Blood Bowl 1, and I think I tried Blood Bowl 2. Blood Bowl 1, I played a ton on the Xbox. Blood Bowl 2, I barely got into, so I passed on to him. Now, the most important thing to note here is that this is a beta version of a game that isn't going to be released until February next year. And we all know how finished video games are when they first release. Well, this is half a year before that. So anything we say tonight is subject to change as the game gets further developed. Now, the big feature of this new release, on top of the usual bumps in graphics and qualities you expect from a new version of a game six years after the last, is the significant rule changes that have come out. This includes new skills and a game, change in the mechanics for ball handling and passing mm. that have added a new stat to the game. Additionally, stat terminology have been changed to match up with other GW properties so that instead of an agility of, not, of eight, it becomes a nine plus, reflecting the target number needed instead of the value. Mm. Additionally, the max mu movement has been reduced to nine, Sorry for the Skaven fans used to skittering across at 10. Uh, and the big one is passing as a stat. No longer is your agility the measure of your passing ability, though it still determines catching. As well, pay players with a null passing stat auto fumble any attempt to pass. Oh, that's quite the change, actually. Now, all these rule changes are due to the digital version of Blood Bowl keeping up with the physical version. Games re Workshop fairly recently re decided to bring back the head coach of the Champions of Death and bring Blood Bowl back from the dead with a new Blood Bowl second season edition, which I think is the fifth or sixth actual edition of this game of fantasy football. As well, there are major additions to the pregame mechanics for fans and team value with a big addition in the prayers to Nuffle, where the bigger the difference between team values, the more prayers the lower ranked team will get. And let me tell you, it is an interesting assortment of things that can come up that both help you and or punish your opponent. Okay. Now, finally, before the game even starts, the kickoff table has also been rewritten with many old favorites <laughs> still available and unchanged, while others have changed quite a bit overall being a bit more balanced than the former sure. table had been, uh, including no more players getting killed by rocks from fans, which was <laughs> just the most painful thing that could happen in a Blood Bowl 2 match when you walk out onto the pitch and before the game starts, you have dead players. Although I gotta say it's quite thematic. It's it's the, the traveler <laughs> of football board games. So the prayers to Nuffle are actually a balancing mechanic, which is cool. I, I remember when you first experienced them, I don't think you realized that because you were like, I don't know, I'm making all these <laughs> rolls on tables. Yeah. It's interesting, but I just, to me, like, do they need that? Like, why didn't they just balance the teams better? Or is this something that changes as you go through a season where winning will get you more star players and re-rolls, which gives you an advantage, and this is a way to offset that? So it's to allow team uh, play between teams that aren't uh, good matches otherwise. So team values or your actual player uh, value. So you've got a, a 1.2 million cost team versus a 900,000 cost team. The prayers help offset that, you know, all-star player towering over your front line when you get on the field. All right. When you start a game, though, aren't you at the same level? Uh, it depends. So there's, okay. there's a bunch of different ways. And uh, the pre-made teams are all of varying values. And you get a certain amount of money you can spend 
on your first team when you're creating your own, but you know, you might not spend the whole thing. You might save it up okay. later. There's Fair different enough. ways. So this whole Nuffle thing was brand new to me. I had never heard of this before. So I did some research and first off figured out what Nuffle comes from. Uh, as a hint, think of what sport Blood Bowl is based on. Now, I learned that the character of Nuffle, the god of Blood Bowl, was added in 2015, which I don't know if that was one of the times they resurrected the board game or if that was just when Blood Bowl 2 came out or whatever. Um, long after I started and stopped playing Blood Bowl, I hadn't touched the game. Up to this point, though, from what I understand, Nuffle was just like background. There was, he wasn't really a big role in the game or its mechanics. Yeah, indeed. Well, referenced here and there, this is as far the only time Nuffle has actually reached down to intervene in hmm. the leagues he uh, oversees. Now, finally, we get to the game itself. This is where things get interesting, as with the limited teams available in the beta, graphically, it doesn't feel all that much different than Blood Bowl 2. Mm -hmm. Even some of the animations are reused, though there are certainly new character animations as well. Uh, the mechanics and playing, however, are quite different, though, and I have to say I haven't taken to them as easily as I would like. So you mentioned the teams you do get. What teams do you have access to and what play modes can you play right now? So when it comes to teams, you get the Elven Union, Imperial Nobility, and Black Orcs. Okay. Three of the expected 12 races that you will get to play with on release. Uh, now, as for game modes, you get team building and matches, either hot seat ver um, uh, versus AI or a quick match online mode. <clears throat> so what did you think about the UI? Why, why is this not as easy as it used to be? So moving about the field just feels a bit more complex than it should. Um, selecting a player and then selecting the place you want them to go used to lay out the path they would take and then a second click on that end space would, if you were happy, activate mm -hmm. the action. Now, though, while the field display, I must say, is very well laid out uh, and there are plenty of display options to customize to your preferences, you can turn on and off grids, turn on and off uh, tackle zones, Turn okay. on and off uh, skill icons over all your players, changing which area, you know, whether it's your your stuff displaying or their stuff displaying, very flexible. Um, but getting the player to actually do the thing you want hmm. is less natural. And I've managed somehow to even activate my blitz without knowing how or why, um, hmm. which is bizarre because you should only be able to do that if you're tackling at a distance. Um, now, there's a new player action type bar at the bottom that determines what kind of an action you're taking. So if it's a blitz, okay. passing, handoff action, or unlimited. But I have to say it's not as clear and obvious as you'd hope, even for someone who I consider myself an experienced player with the digital version of Blood Bowl. Hmm. Now, one major change I'm personally not a fan of is how the interface handles rerolls. In Blood Bowl 2, if, for instance, you fail an agility check running through a tackle zone, you're tripped. You watch your player go down hard and in the dirt, and then you're offered a reroll, if available, to get a do-over on that turn. Mm -hmm. In this version, if you fail a check, you get a pop-up that asks you if you want to accept or reroll, even if you don't have any rerolls available, mm -hmm. before action occurs on the field which means if you glanced away, you may not even know what it is you're accepting or re-rolling. And this is something I really hope that gets changed prior to release. That sounds like definitely one to submit to the beta reports. Now, is there some script you can look back on to see what happened to cause that roll? Because I know most of these games based on board games tend to have some kind of log so you can see the mechanics in the background. So as, as with previous games, there is a log. Uh, and as one would expect, its display can be adjusted to off or minimal or large, taking up a big chunk of the screen but it only reports the results after completion, oh. which includes the team roll. So the initial attempt, which would have failed, isn't complete until you've chosen to re-roll or not, so it doesn't appear on the log. Yeah, at least fix that. Yeah. So additionally, the dice selection in general is larger, uh, making it a, a sort of full screen check rather than just something clearly applicable to the player that's making the action or someone on the field, you know, potentially leading to the same problem if you're not fixated on your screen. 
uh, I even ran into a strange event where the player view, the 3D camera move, was blocked by a 3D die that was hanging in the air during a player opponent's movement. Now, to be fair here, not everyone is you with seven monitors and getting distracted in the middle of playing a game. I think most people do focus on the game while they're playing. So that might be more of a you issue than a game issue. Possibly. And I mean, again, your Blood Bowl is a time limited event, but, uh, you know, it doesn't it doesn't take too much to for someone to say, hey, what are you doing? And you look away and your players run. But fair. all of a sudden, you know, maybe you had three different moves and maybe maybe one of the tackle zones you would be willing to accept a fall in. Uh, it's not necessarily clear which of those tackle zones you failed in. All right, fair enough. Now, there are a number of other changes to the mechanics of Blood Bowl itself, from star player points, skills added and adjusted for balance, into what I feel is overall a more balanced game, while changing the strategies for many teams, especially mm. those with high agility. Now, that was all changed in the physical version, though, and many articles have already been written about that. So I'd like to try and focus more on the digital version. I do have to say the rule changes I've read about just seem to make sense for the steam theme and style of the game. They seem like a logical progression or a logical next step for Blood Bowl. Indeed. And while there are people out there complaining about some of the pregame stuff, it makes sense and is a balanced mechanic. Mm -hmm. Most of those people complaining want to continue with some of the broken, unbalanced <laughs> teams that they've just grown to love. Yeah, I will admit, most of the agility complaints uh, seem to be the fact that some teams were a little overpowered because of it before. Absolutely. Like I was mentioning Skavens, I mean, literally, Skavens yeah, had Skavens. A, a, some players that had an agility of 10 and a movement, or like a high agility and a movement of 10, and could just scamper across the entire field over top of other players. Yep. Now, team customization, uh, as you'd expect with advances in graphics, is much greater. Though while you can customize each type of player on your team, you can't seem to customize individual players. So if you've got that one lineman that manages to pull off amazing feats through random luck, you can't really show him off on the field with a different look. Now, currently in the beta, the only teams available for customization are the new Imperials who are replacing the Breton Bretonians, uh, the Elves in the form of the Elven Union, and the new Black Orcs, which are a more capable orc. But as you'd expect, they all look top-notch and are well animated. Uh, I did run into a few glitches for their positioning on the field, but that's the sort of thing which I'm, I'm sure is going to be uh, rectified during the pre-release. And the amount of color customization mm. is really impressive. I got to wonder if being able to customize individual players is something that may get added to the full version. Though honestly, because this is a Games Workshop license and I've seen the screenshots, those are definitely what the new minis look like, right? The sculpts are definitely made to look like the new ones in the second season. And while even in that, you have standard miniatures for each player type. So a runner looked like this, a blitzer looked like this, a blocker looked like this, a lineman looked like this. And it makes sense that the in the team, they would all look the same when the miniatures all do look the same, except for star players and little spell shitty like trolls or tree men or whatever. So, and, and as far as I can tell, like I looked at a couple of the ses second season box sets, it, they never did get away from that. Though I got to admit, it's way better than my second edition of the game where every miniature was identical and the color of the base told you what it was. Although I, I have to say, I mean, with the level of flexibility you get uh, with, with patterns and paint colors and, and all the paint colors or official GW paints, oh, of course. Uh, um, but it would be nice to be able to just not change their uh, armor or anything, but just put a different paint color. color on one of them, you know, just so you know, oh yeah, that's my, you know, special yeah. lineman that I gave an extra skill to. Um, now I know all sculpts and animation have to be approved by GW yeah. before they make it into the game. So yes, fans, all those orcs cheerleaders from Blood Bowl 2 were actually approved by GW. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're probably more sane than I am. Hey, I, I have Blood Bowl metal painted or two liters. I don't yeah. know if they look like the ones in Blood Bowl 2, <laughs> but I own one. Yeah. Now, what's still missing and quite noticeably is any form of tutorial, which I think would be really nice to introduce the interface changes from mm -hmm. the last version. And what's also missing is the solo campaign. Now, as a big bonus from previous editions of the digital game, the solo campaign will be open to any race nice. no more stuck getting uh, getting working with nobody but the dumb umis 
from the bottom of the league. Now, additionally, you're going to be able to take your campaign team out of the campaign to use in other game aspects as well. Yeah, this doesn't surprise me, to be honest. Um, the, the last year being stuck at home and not playing as many tabletop games, we've actually gotten to check out a number of digital game previews, and that is definitely something it, I, I have to assume it's like one of the last things they add to the games are the tutorials. Uh, just earlier today, I was playing through a new tutorial and onboarding for a game we played many times, and I was like, oh, they've added onboarding. That would have been nice to see the first time I played this game. Yeah. Now, we are told there are going to be 12 races available at launch. Already quite a few of your old team favorites uh, are going to be there for uh, AI or quick selection and test matches. Uh, but while it may not be a finished product, I can't at this point report that the AI is any better than it was previously. Not only is the AI still caging re regularly, but I found it was completely ignoring some of the elven strengths against an orc team, and even at times running away from a loose ball. Weird. Um, so at the moment, skilled, real Umi opponents are still going to be what a real Blood Bowl player needs for a challenge. I do like they at least put the teams in as AIs. I, I When we watched a press release for this, I actually thought you're going to have three teams, and you're going to see the three teams play against each other over and over again. I, I was not expecting... Like, at least, like, yes, there's only three you can play, but you at least get to see the other one. So that's actually cooler than I thought it would be. Yeah, so the problem is the game, at least at this point, just doesn't feel different enough unless you're a huge Blood Bowl fan and need the new rules uh, in order to put, rush out and pay AAA game prices for. Uh, the AI is just, you know, not that much more competent than it was in previous mm -hmm. games. Um, and that's an important aspect of a Blood Bowl game, unfortunately. Uh, and though the solo mode not being purely human, I think will be a huge selling oh, yeah. point over prior editions. But I'm still not at a point yet where as someone who has both the previous versions and all the DLC, I'm just not eager to run out and pay full price for it. Uh, there's little chance of me not buying it again. I am a fan of the game. I am a fan of the Warhammer world. I still enjoy Blood Bowl 2, uh, and I know that additional content will be coming out for Blood Bowl mm -hmm. 3 in time, so it wouldn't be the first time that I'd waited for the Legendary Edition to come out before I actually ended up paying for it. Yeah, this is one I, I will not be rushing out to pick up right away, but I might pick up on sale. Uh, it'll depend probably on what system it puts it out for. <laughs> I'm not a PC gamer. I work at this desk. I need to be, like, on my couch playing something, so... It still sounds good. It sounds like they're doing good things. What it does sound like is a better entry point if you hadn't played the previous games. Indeed, yeah. And the new again, the new rules really do make for a more balanced game yeah. than someone who is used to some of the earlier versions or not used to any of it. Or and not being forced to play the same team. Yeah. Like you, I didn't even know that about Blood Bowl Two. That I have less interest. If I can't start playing Orc in story mode, why would I play Blood Bowl? Right. So that's it for our preview of Blood Bowl 3 for the PC. I'm sure we'll be back in the future with more reports on this still evolving digital version of one of our favorite Games Workshop games.